In this video, I will show you how to prove that a quadrilateral is a rectangle or a rhombus. So um, you're going to have to state your strategy up front. So for problem number seven, uh, we're given the four vertices and we're supposed to prove that this quadrilateral ABCD is a rectangle. So first of all, what is the definition of a rectangle? So a rectangle is a quadrilateral that has four right angles. This is the definition. Four right angles. So our strategy has to be to show that we have four right angles. So um, let me zoom in. Let's start by just graphing the quadrilateral so we, we can get a sort of a bird's eye view. Negative um, 5 comma 0 is right here. And uh, 1 comma negative 4 is right here, so that'll be point B. Then we have 5 comma 2, okay, that's point C. And uh, then we have negative 1 comma 6 for point D. Okay, and we have to prove that this is a rectangle. Um, whoops, let me, I forgot to put the label. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and draw the lines themselves. Okay, well, that's a little bit too big, isn't it? So here's a nice picture of the quadrilateral. So our strategy will be to prove that the uh, vertices are at right angles. Okay, and you should write that down. I will use slope to show that each corner is a 90 degree angle. So let's go ahead and find each slope and it will be helpful if we record the slopes in order so we can show which ones are consecutive. So I'll do a, slope AB and then BC and then CD and then DA in order. So let's start with um, slope AB. Okay, um, so if, as I'm looking at slope AB, of course I'm looking at these two points right here. And uh, we know that slope, uh, every time I do slope I'm doing Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. That is how we find the slope. So that's what I'm doing right now. So that's why I'm going to do 0 minus negative 4, okay, and negative 5 minus 1, okay, so that's going to give me, so first of all this is the same thing as 0 plus 4, so that's going to be 4 over uh, negative 6, which equals negative 2 over 3. All right, so that is the first slope. So next, let's find the slope of BC. All right, so slope BC. Okay, so now I'm looking at BC. So let me change my highlighting. I'm looking at these two points now. So, still we're doing y minus y over x minus x. So, um, I might do 2 minus negative 4. So, 2 minus negative 4 over 5 minus 1. And minus a negative is addition. So, that's going to give me 6 over 4, which is, uh, sorry, 3 over 2. Okay, it's continuing around. Now let's find the slope of CD. So 
so y minus y is 6 minus 2. So we will have 6 minus 2 over negative 1 minus 5. So that's going to be 4 over negative 6, which is negative 2 over 3. Okay, and finally we will do slope dA. Okay. So that's going to be um, 6 minus 0. Let's see, slope dA is going to be 6 minus 0 over negative 1 minus negative 5. Of course, minus and negative is addition. So that's going to give me 6 over 4, which is 2 thirds. Now, look at these slopes. These are all consecutive. Um, notice that each pair of consecutive slopes um, are opposite and reciprocal. I have negative 2 thirds, positive 3 over 2, negative 2 thirds, Wait, this should have been 3 over 2. Man, my brain is messing with me. Uh, all right, of course, 6 over 4 is 3 over 2, not 2 thirds. All right, negative 2 thirds, positive 3 over 2. Each consecutive pair is opposite and reciprocal. Okay, and of course, we know if these pairs are opposite and reciprocal, that means that uh, we have perpendicular lines. So because uh, AB and BC ha uh, slopes are opposite and reciprocal, that means um, AB and BC are perpendicular. So we have a right angle. Um, because BC and CD are opposite and reciprocal, that means BC and CD also form a right angle. Because CD and DA are opposite and reciprocal, that means CD and DA form a right angle. And finally, um, because AB, negative 2 thirds, and DA, positive 3 over 2, these are also opposite and reciprocal. That means that these are uh, perpendicular. They form a 90 degree angle. All right, so we have all the evidence that we need. Now it's time for the summary statement. Since the slopes of all consecutive sides are opposite and reciprocal, all consecutive sides are perpendicular. Therefore, each corner is a 90 degree angle, which makes ABCD a rectangle. So just zooming out to get the big picture. Okay, so this is what a proof should look like. It has three parts to it. You start by saying what your strategy is. I will use slope to show that each corner is a 90 degree angle. Uh, then you go ahead and do that, show your calculations, and then uh, finish with a summary statement that ties it all together and proves whatever it is you were trying to prove. All right, let's do that one more time. Uh, this time we're going to go ahead and prove that um, triangle ABCD is a rhombus. Okay, it's a whole new set of points. So we might as well start by plotting the points. So point A is at 1 comma 1. So there's point A. And then uh, point B is at 0 comma 5. And point C is at 4 comma 4. And point D is at uh, 5 comma 0.
So we are to prove that this quadrilateral is a rhombus. So we have to start by knowing what a rhombus is. What's the definition of a rhombus? So remember that the definition of a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. So that's what I'm going, going to have to prove. And the first thing I need to do is write down my strategy. Um, if I want to prove that I have four congruent sides, am I going to use slope, length, or midpoint? Hopefully you said, obviously we're going to use length, all right? If I want to show that sides are congruent, slope doesn't have anything to do with wh whether or not these are congruent. Uh, congruent segments are segments of equal length. So, um, we're, so obviously our strategy has to be that we will show that the length of each side is equal. So yeah, I will show that all sides have equal length. Now I will do the calculations that I just said I was going to do. Um, so if I write AB like this, all right, without a segment symbol over the top of it, uh, this means the length of AB or the distance from A to B. Automatically, AB means length. So I'm going to be finding the length of AB. I'm going to be finding the length of BC, the length of CD, and the length of DA. All right, I'm going to find these four lengths. Now, we've learned two strategies to find the lengths. And uh, I'm going to do, uh, uh, I'm going to switch it up and, sh and remind you of both strategies. And you can choose which strategy you prefer. So here's one of the strategies, uh, Pythagorean theorem. So one way to find the length of AB is to make a little triangle that has uh, AB as the hypotenuse. So if I look at this triangle, I see that the horizontal piece has length one, and the vertical piece has length four. Okay, so in that case, I can just do the Pythagorean theorem, all right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, I'm sort of skipping a step, I guess. Maybe I'll show this off to the side. Um, off to the side, considering a, b, uh, if I call that c for a moment, then I would know that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So that would be like 1 squared uh, plus 4 squared, right? But then the next thing I would do to get c by itself is to take the square root of both sides. So that's why uh, I'm going to write one square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared. Okay, I'm just doing the Pythagorean theorem. But I like to just go straight to the square root. Okay, just keeping my work tidy and neat. Okay, and this is my, if, if I have a graph given to me, this is my preferred way of doing it. Okay, so now I, I could do the square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared. Okay, that is radical 17, which is approximately 4.12. Okay, let's do that same thing again for uh, the length of BC. All right, so one more time, I could do a Pythagorean theorem where the horizontal piece here is 4 and the vertical piece is 1. All right, so again, using the uh, Pythagorean theorem, that's going to be the square root of uh, 4 squared plus 1 squared. All right, which is the same thing as what we had before. So I know this is, uh, once again, going to be the square root of 17, which is approximately 4.12. OK? Um, so that's one method of finding the length is to do the Pythagorean theorem. 
The other method is something that I would uh, more likely use if I didn't have a graph given to me like this. So the next thing I want to find the length of is CD. So I'm going to look at that now. Um, so what I could do is I could use the distance formula. All right, because length is just the distance between two points. So I could use the distance formula, which looks like this. It's the square root of x, uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, that's the distance formula. The order doesn't really matter, so sometimes I just say x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. Um, so, that's another way to do it. So if I think of it that way, so um, when I do my uh, distance formula, um, so I might do this. So x minus x, so that would be uh, 5 minus 4 squared. And then I've got y minus y, so that would be 0 minus 4 squared. Okay, and uh, so, I mean, I could work this out step by step, or I could use a calculator, which is what I'm going to do right now, just to show you that you can. So, 5 minus 4 squared uh, plus 0 minus 4 squared. Oh, look, radical 17. Okay, which is approximately equal to 4.12. We already know. Okay, so one more time. Um, so now I will do DA using the distance formula method. Okay, so here's A and here's D. So X minus X. So I could do 1 minus 5 or... 5 minus 1, it really doesn't matter. Okay, I'll do 5 minus 1 squared. And then 0 minus 1 squared. And once again, we get radical 17, which we know to be approximately 4.12. So uh, we wrote our strategy first. We did the calculations based on our strategy. And now the final step is to write our summary statement. So you would write something like, since all sides have the same length, ABCD is a rhombus. Let's just zoom out and look at the big picture. So when you're asked to do a proof, you have to look at what you're trying to prove and, um, you know, what's the definition so you can get your strategy. So in this case, um, we had to prove that ABCD was a rhombus. So we glance at the definition and we know a rhombus has four congruent sides. Um, so you have to write your strategy. That's step one, is write your strategy. I will show that all sides have equal length. Okay, that's what a rhombus is, so that's our strategy. Then you show your calculations, okay, and which of course showed that all sides have equal length. And then you make your summary statement. Since all sides have the same length, ABCD is a rhombus. So, you write your strategy, do your calculations, make a summary statement. And that's how you prove that a quadrilateral is a rhombus or a rectangle. And you could use the same uh, basic format to prove uh, anything you want about a quadrilateral. You know, like uh, you could use the same idea to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. You could use slopes to show that um, the opposite sides are parallel, for example. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe. 
or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.